Good morning, South Beach. South Beach. Here we are at the world famous Fifth Street Gym, Miami Beach for podcast number 17 with our special guest and hometown champion, Daniele Toretto Scardina. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. Literally, you were in Italy the whole summer. Yeah. I was there part of the summer, but you were there the whole summer <laughs> and uh, I got back sooner than you did and I was waiting for you to come back to start camp for the next fight, October 7th in Milan. October 1st. October 1st, sorry. In Milan versus Dobenstein. Yeah. He's yes. A guy from <laughs> it's a tricky, tricky German name. Nevertheless, he's got a lot of experience. He's a tough guy. He's been around the block. He's actually trained here in Miami at some point. So not here in our gym, but here in Miami. And uh, he's a very, uh, very tricky fighter. What do you think about the fight coming up? I mean, we, we're getting ready for the next fight. I'm super focused. And I know it's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be one of the important fight, fight of my life. So we, we, we're going to be ready for that fight. And you know, we train so hard. So. So as you know, Danny trains here with me, with us, and uh, he trains clearly harder than any fighter I've ever associated with. But this fight is not going to be really about hard training as much as it is going to be about smart training. Uh, it's a little bit shorter camp. It's a little bit trickier fighter. Um, do you have anything in mind that uh, you want to make sure happens differently? I know what I have planned for us, but is there anything you have in, in, on your plate that you're thinking about making sure we get done this camp? You know, we make a plan for, for this fight, so, and, I mean, you, you, you know, we, we just, the, the key for me is to train hard, work hard, so, uh, yeah, the camp is short, so, so we, we try to, to do everything more intense, and be ready for the October 1st and go and win the bet. Patrick, you've uh, talked to a lot of fighters. You met a lot of fighters. You met Berlanga, yep. uh, big up and comer in his same division. Uh, you know, C Canelo is is there. He's the king of sure. the division right now. So, what do you think about this fight coming up? I'm excited for it. You know, there's like you mentioned at 168. There's a ton of fighters right now that are making a lot of noise. A lot of young guys, uh, Khalil Ko, another guy I talked to out of Brooklyn, who's on the rise and just signed with uh, Matchroom. So, there's a lot of talent at 168 you know you're right at the top you're you're so close to getting that world title fight i believe this is for wbo international correct yeah. correct and um, the continental okay and um you know what i was interested in too for not only daniele but also you know dino you guys fought in this arena before in your last fight correct yeah so is there any like comfortability knowing that you're going back to the same place maybe you know you're familiar with the arena maybe the locker room you're kind of you know, maybe a little advantage, hometown, obviously, Italy. Talk to me about, like, you know, you know being in the arena. It's great for me because it's my hometown, and uh, I'm super happy to fight over there. The, the last fight was with no no people. I mean, it was... Uh, no fans. No fans. Yeah. So this was, is different. Was a re was hard for me because uh, I really feel the, the energy, you know? So the, ne the next fight is going to be with more people, so... Uh, I'm super happy to fight over there and feel, feel the energy. Do you feel like that energy right away, like you're going to come out hot? I know in the in your fight, your last fight, there were some moments right early where it seemed like you you got hurt at times. If maybe I'm maybe I'm incorrect, but it seemed like early in the fight you took a few shots you maybe didn't need to. Then you really turned it on and the tables turned. Was but that you, because of the no crowd? Yeah. With no crowd, the adrenaline was like up and down, you know. But usually, with crowd, with people, and with your fans, is is always up the adrenaline. So at that fight, uh, the the adrenaline was like up and down. So uh, I, I got some shot. So I had to figure out um, between the fight. So it was a good lesson for me. Were you hurt in that fight at all? Were you hurt? Not really. I mean. I, I just give him uh, more distance. Um, I give him his distance. I try to do uh, his, his game. 
So that's why I had to figure out. I had to figure out in between the fight. So it was a big lesson for me. So Did you think you tried to like knock him out early thinking that you had him and maybe it didn't go that way? What what was it or was it just I don't know, the guy was tough. The tough. guy was really tough and was ready to fight against me. So uh, I think it was good. Mm. Good experience. Uh, the round nine. Eight, yeah, nine. Eight, yeah, the eighth you want to probably put him away. Uh, you know, essentially his his he's a boxer puncher that uh, needs to work behind his jab and can he's taller than most. Actually, this next fight, the guy might be a little taller than him or the same, but typically he's taller than everybody and he needs to stay behind the jab and, and do some things that he was getting away from in the beginning of that fight. And he started to trade. And when you trade, that's exactly what happens. You get some and I get some. He got some. He has a, a chin like a, you know, like a rock. So it wasn't that he got hurt, but he did get hit. And uh, people saw that. And you know what? It turns out in boxing, you do get punched sometimes. And he, when he fights the top fighters in the world, he's also going to get punched even when he stays to the plan because they're so good that they're going to get him at some point. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's nothing but learning came from that experience. Yeah. Now, how to be self-motivated, not feed off the crowd. What if you get to, what, what happens when he fights Canelo in Mexico? They're not going to cheer for him. You know, well, so Canelo's a guy's got a grand night chin off. Yeah, so you know it's gonna grand night. It, it's, it's definitely gonna. Uh, it's definitely gonna be an, a, a, every fight's a learning experience, and that's what these. That's what every step is about. Yeah, you know, you hear people complaining about who fighters fight. Who fighters fight? Who did Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson fight his tenth fight. Nobody knows. Nobody knows it was somebody that never did anything. That was Mike, who was an unbelievable talent, learning on the job, learning his craft, learning how to go to different stadiums, how to wear different gloves, how to deal with different referees and different judges. So these are all learning experiences. You know, if you're an Olympic gold medalist, maybe you start a little faster, but basically everybody's learning, yeah. and uh, it was a learning experience for him and for me yeah. to try to motivate him under different circumstances. He, if you, you could hear the microphone on me when he's in the corner, how, how I'm talking to him. And uh, it eventually, I got, I clicked. He got it, what I wanted, and he got in the plan, took care of business, and we were still home early. Early enough to get some pizza before the restaurant closed. <laughs> yeah. no, don't get me wrong, you know, you still got him out of there. I'm not, <laughs> but I just wanted to ask about those early rounds. And, and I do want to talk more about some of the, um, you know, the shark tank that is the 168 pound division. But, I want to go back for a minute. The last few months, you've been in Italy. I saw you with Marvin Vittori, UFC, um, top contender. Uh, you know, it seemed like you guys have a good training relationship, kind of another guy um, that's representing Italy on the biggest stage. What's it like to represent Italy in boxing right now um, at the highest level? And, you know, have a guy like Marvin, who's, who seems like a friend, right? And he's at the highest level in the UFC. Yeah, me and, Mar and Marvin, we are really good friends right now. So every time we can be together, we try to do something for to show the people we gotta be, we gotta stay together, you know, to to be bigger. That's the truth. And for the fans in Italy, was was, was super nice, it was cool, and it's my good friend. So yeah, help each other grow your <laughs> yeah, yeah, brand. Sure. And he's a good champion. He's have a fight right now. I think October twenty three. Yep. So. Yep fighting very soon as well yeah. so both of you guys representing Italy you know in a few weeks pretty exciting for well, speaking uh, of representing Viking. Italy you guys are the fastest 100 meters in the world 100 meter everything Italy's what, killing it what do you think about the Euro Cup meter, 100 meters and the and the uh, 100 uh, he's my friend relay I know so as well. I'm super and happy for him and I'm super proud of him 100 meters in the relay too right yeah in the relay when the 4x4 four four the Italians are are killing it. We know they can eat. They must be eating a special pasta that's making them <laughs> fast. Uh, so, what do you? Are you going to do anything different for your fight this time? Are you going to train differently since you have less time? Are you going to go? Well, which you know, the exact every, plan? But what do you, do you know have in, in, in mind? Every, in every fight, you you go improve. You know yourself. So uh, maybe last time we did something wrong, and now we we try to figure out. And so every time you go and, and learn more stuff, so I think now we we make the every time you make the team bigger, you know, str bigger and stronger. So I think that's what we do right now, and, you know, go in pro and to be on the top ten in the world and try to fight 
for the for the belt, for the world champion belt. But you know, step by step, next fight is going to be super important, important for us. So let's go and get the belt. We brought in a new strength coach this time, uh, an additional strength coach, I should say, uh, Daru. This is his last name, Daru Strength. And he's located in Florida. He's been the uh, uh, MMA trainer of the year, I think, three times. And uh, he's had a lot of a lot of boxers and athletes, all baseball players, professional athletes all over the world. And uh, we're all, like he said, trying to make the team bigger and stronger to propel us, you know, to the world title. I am always looking to learn as a coach. He's always looking to learn as a fighter. And that is really kind of unique because typically when people are in the top 10, they're know-it-alls. You know, and uh, we went there with an open mind, an open heart, and we learned some stuff already, and we're going to continue to learn through this camp. Uh, so it's, so we're, we're adding, adding all the time to just make him as well-rounded as possible. So that, you know, right, like right now it's Canelo. It could be somebody else for the world title, you know, by the time we're, we're ready to go next year. Sure. And uh, we'll be ready for whoever that is, too. Well, tell me about that, the Canelo-Caleb Plant announcement. I think that was announced late last night. It's official, signed. Yep. A lot of people, you know, it's hard to bet against Canelo right now. But he looks so good. He's got such a tight team like you guys do, like touching on what you just said. Like, it's good to have that core group. And Canelo definitely has it with Eddie Reynoso. And he's yeah. got, you know, a lot of great other fighters in that gym. Um, does Plant have a chance, do you think? Like, how do you see that fight playing out? Do you see Canelo having problems against a guy like Caleb Plant? I think right now nobody have a chance win against Canelo. That's what I think right now. So let's see. Caleb Plant is a really good fighter. So let's see. Maybe it's going to be a good fight. I think it's going to be a good fight. And I also think that you have to remember Canelo's fighting with a different mentality. He almost can't lose. I mean, even the fight, you know, he fought uh, a Cuban um, that was a world champion. Yeah, Lada. Lada. Lada yeah, and Lada. I thought I thought Lada won. So if you know you got the judges on your side, not cheating for you, but they're they're looking at your technique, they're following you, they, you have the fans and the money behind you. You can fight a little more reckless. You can go for the knockout. You don't have to you don't have to make mistakes. He's got a great chin. Caleb's not known for having giant power, so he can really go out there and fight. You know. Free, he can really let himself go. But tell me about that because with BJ Sa with BJ Saunders, Billy Joe Saunders, I thought he was winning that fight before he broke the, or it was close, like he was winning yeah, some rounds. But it was he wasn't going to win the cards. Come I on, things. So. No. There's no way. So even if he was winning, that's the point. He can just keep going out there, guns blazing, until he hurts you because he doesn't got to worry about giving away rounds because they're going to give him rounds that maybe he doesn't deserve. And that's the sport that we have. He sells millions and millions of dollars with the tickets. He has a giant following, and it is what it is. When you go to beat the champion, you really got to beat the champion. In this case, probably you know more so than ever. Well, what I mean, is interesting, it is not on the zone. It's not a matchroom event. It's PBC and Fox. Okay. Eddie Hearn is not blocking it. He said, I'm going to ride with Canelo on this. I don't know what his promotional deal is. But this is going to be a, a PBC Fox show. Wow. So the Canelo bias, you know, I don't know. It might not be. The, Mayweather, Mayweather's behind this the scenes, and he likes yeah. Caleb Plant. He's with Caleb it's Plant. It's who the judges are going to be. So that, yeah. that you can have all the TV you want. It's who the judges are going to be. What's, what belt is that for? It's for it unified. Unified. How many, uh, how many belts? For all four all, of them? All of them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All four of them. Plant of IBF. Plant of IBF and, and Canelo. Is the other three. Yeah. So it's the unified. The negotiations got a lot to do with like, who the judges are going to be. That's yeah. going to decide a lot. But I'll tell you though, though we, we once were fighting for the European title and uh, with another fighter, and I was telling the fighter, "You are in Croatia. You're not, you're from Belgium." You better take, the, we better close this round. You better go get him, knock him out. Don't leave the judge in. You're gonna, they're gonna steal this fight from you. I was later in the hotel and the judge were outside smoking cigarettes, like, just so you know, we had you up on every card. We were gonna steal the fight from you. So you never know, but you don't know until they raise the hand. You never know. So you don't wanna take any chance. But Canelo, like I said, he can just go out there with a reckless abandon because he knows if it's, if it's close, they're giving him the round. And that, that makes a big difference. Um, how do you see your, your, your fight versus Canelo? If you were to fight Canelo, tomorrow this kid breaks his toe and they got you as a substitute because you could qualify. You're the IBF. You're ranked in the IBF. Uh, what would you do to fight Canelo differently than you'd fight anybody else? I think, I think he's, I mean, I know he's a one step, I mean, oh, one or two step more than me. So I just go and do all myself. 
But an interesting thing, though, like that I want to say to you, too, is like Yoel Romero on the MMA side, he's got like this famous quote a few years ago. And he was talking about Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier. And he said, Muhammad Ali, he had the best moves in the game. He had the best feet, the best skills, everything. But a guy, Joe Frazier, smaller guy, less skilled, dirty boxing, like overcame Will, beat him one time. So anybody can be beat in this game. Yeah, That's sure. what's beautiful about boxing, right? One pen punch can change it all. You never know someone's heart and will. And, you know, do I think Caleb Plant is going to win? No, I, I don't. But you never I think know. Caleb Plant has the mindset where he's going to go. He's going to be a Give dog in there. And he's been, he has a crazy life story. He's been through a ton of pain that, you know, he's talked about in the past. And he's he's gonna you know he's not gonna lay down in there so you never know. Yeah, I actually think that's the real the real uh, secret to, to beating Canelo. To beating Canelo is is your mentality. At the same time, Canelo's life is we only know what we see on Instagram. You know, he could have a, a he could have a sick parent, God forbid. He could have a, a child in the hospital, God forbid. He could be going through a divorce. He could, you know, fighters are are known for being scoundrels with women. He could the, the week before he gets he fights, he get caught with his girlfriend. Not that he has a girlfriend, but it could happen. And that stress weighing on him could be distracting. That's just a little crack that the opponent needs to get in there and make something and change and, you know, shock the world. It's happened before. It's happened, happened again. But I think a lot of times it's not only the, it's a, I think a smaller part of it is the mentality of the, of the up and comer. And it's about the state of mind of the champion. Yeah. To be a champion is one thing. To be, stay champion takes a whole other mindset. Joe Lewis said it's hard to get up and run when you're sleeping on silk sheets. Hard Hagler, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Hagler. Marvin Hagler. You sure? The Boston guy, I know that. Okay, all right, my fault. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, um, it's, a, it's a challenge. Yeah. You know, all the cars and all the money and all the invitations. I mean, he has, when he's in, it's hard to get him out of it. You can't get a phone call in. I'm like, his, I'm as close to him as like his, as you get. His own brother can't reach him when he's in Italy because he gets invitations. He was on Dancing with the Stars. He gets yachts. He gets exposed. Imagine Canelo. So if Canelo gets loses focus, which could happen, he's a human being. Anything can happen on Saturday night. Yeah, it's um, you know boxing is a beautiful sport, and that's why you know anyone can show up on the night like Buster Douglas too. Like he talked about, I believe his mom was sick leading up to the Tyson fight, and he promised his mom he said, "I'm going to win this." Fight. Like she died actually, and he yeah. said, "You know, I'm winning. I'm winning this fight." You know, there's a lot of stories like that in the game. Um, and it's going to take a special effort to beat Canelo because, of course, his, his skill level is crazy right now. You just like you don't. What's his What's his weakness? It's hard to point out. But anybody can lose. So we will see. There's a ton of top guys at the 168 division right now. Um, but a mega fight this weekend that we got to talk about. A legend of the sport, Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao back in the ring. He's 42 years old. Talk about a guy with heart, will, come back from knockout losses. Getting belts back. I mean, this guy is an inspiration. He's fighting Ugas, late replacement for Spence. Um, I'd love to hear all you guys talk about it. Like, what is your breakdown of this fight? I want to see Pacquiao do it because I just want to see him cement his legacy one step further. But, I mean, talk about this guy, this legend, Manny Pacquiao. He's a legend. I mean, he's a legend. And he's, he's one of the best, 42 years old, so keep fighting like that. He's still hungry, so he's a legend. Has there ever been another seven division champion other than him? So I was talking to all about him. He's like, yeah, nobody's ever done it. Seven division champion. Seven? I think he's seven. Right? Right? He started one or six. Yeah. Seven what, weight classes. Yeah. Seven yeah. weight classes. Wow. Yeah. He started so small. I think nobody. No. I think anyone's ever done I think it. he's gone through the most divisions, most definitely. And like, I remember watching a documentary on Manny Pacquiao recently and <laughs> like watching his early fights at whatever weight that was, 106 or whatever. It's like, this guy's a small guy. I mean, th- he doesn't even belong at 147. He could be probably fighting at 135 right now. And, um, you know, Ugas is going to have a big size advantage. But, you know, in his last performance, Pacquiao, first round, knocked Thurman on his butt, lit the crowd on fire. Can never sleep on this guy, so... He's got power. His calves. Tom and I actually spent two or three camps with him and Freddie Roach, with, along with our heavyweight, Fresno Kendo. And he's got giant calves. He can dunk a basketball with two hands from standing under the net. <laughs> no, no, really? I'm telling you. 
That is telling me he is in, like Spud Webb. He is insane. He um and in between rounds he he hits the bag and jumps up and touches the ceiling in the gym. He's crazy the amount of effort that he puts in. Uh, the intensity. He hits the heavy bag like it's a, it sounds like a karate movie, screaming and going psycho on the bag. The again the level of intensity is something that Ugas, who's a very mellow guy, is going to have a big challenge to, to match that level of intensity. Yeah. Be very, and he's very skilled, and he's super good, and he should beat him at 42. But again, I'd like to see Pacquiao win. Yeah. Danielle, who are some guys you grew up watching that like really inspired you? Like Maybe they're older fighters, maybe even some current guys. Like Who are guys you look at, and you're like, I want to be like him? Miguel Cotto. Cotto. Yeah, he was one of the, my favorite. So, great, great fight. Were there like a couple fights that stood out or like moments you remember as a kid watching a fight or something like that that kind of like grabbed your attention and said, man, I want to be a fighter? One of my favorite fights was Miguel Cotto against, against Margarito, the second one. Yeah, it was crazy. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. That was a war. Speaking of you know, Canelo, we were talking about it in Cotto. Did you guys ever see that fight? Have you ever seen it? I mean... I think Cotto won that fight, to be honest with you. We saw the fight on uh, yeah. the, the yeah. old gym. I think... Mm-hmm. Right? I, mean, I think so, but, you know... Again? I mean, it was a good fight, but, you know... I watched the fight afterwards, and the guy announcing was a, a Mexican guy. And, obviously, Canelo was Mexican, and Cotto was Puerto Rican. The Mexican guy was furious that, that they gave the fight to, uh, to uh, Canelo. Canelo. And he, he had the fight for Cotto. Well, you're never going to get a decision. You're just not going to win it. That's it. He's, yeah. he's a money. He's a yeah, triple G even the first time. Yeah. 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 It's very strange that he's got such hype and we believe that he's so invincible when he's really been beat maybe three times, uh, four times, including Mayweather, you know? So, uh, I mean, he's, you know, even even Danny is like, well, he's, he's clearly one or two steps ahead of me. I don't know if he is one or two steps ahead of you. And I know that sounds cocky or arrogant or stupid, but whatever. He's not 40 and 0. No, he's not. He, and those, 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 those three of those fights are super questionable. Um, the, the Cuban kid, who I can never think of his name. Lara. Thank you, Lara. I felt schooled him, outbox him clear, but he's got the judge on his side. And you know, there's, you know, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And that goes, that goes in boxing too. Did Cotto's brother hurt him early on? I think like in that second round, he caught him. He really hurt. The only time I think Canelo's been hurt. Yeah, but then was he, it? Then, then, then he came back and blew him out. Yeah. Then he put yeah, him out. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying he's been hurt. You yeah. can't. Yeah, he's human. I feel that he's too small for the division. Genuinely, for you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know how he. I don't know how he puts on that much muscle. Yeah, he don't look like. He eats yeah. a lot of. Cows. Yeah, oh yeah, is that what it is? A lot of a lot of Mexican beef. Yeah, Mexican beef. Yeah, so I I question how he could be so muscular at that height and still make weight, and the whole thing is very confusing to me. I've only been around boxing gym since I'm five years old, and I'm still very confused by this. But uh, nevertheless, um, I guess we're gonna, you know, I guess we'll find out. Tonight. Yeah, we'll see. But Daniele, with your you know career right now, obviously you got a massive fight ahead of you, like. What do you envision yourself? You know, obviously a world champion, but like if we have the next couple of years here, like when you go to sleep at night, you envision what you're going to be, your legacy, or do you take it one day at a time? You know, the big vision is to be world champion, to be in, uh, on the top, uh, to be the number one in the world. That's the big vision. And you know, to my big vision is, uh, is in, in, to be like example for the, for the people to be a, like an icon, you know, for the people in Italy and in the whole world. So that's the big vision. But one of, in, in, on one of the big, big vision is to be world champion and maybe fight Canelo. You know, you were talking about the fight, his home fight. Uh, it's actually a, bit pain, a super pain in the ass, his home fight, because he doesn't say no to anybody. So his locker room is filled with people in wheelchairs, people, little kids, Parents, grandparents, people he doesn't know. He looks at me, we're taking a, you take a picture, he's like, I have no idea who this guy is. He has no idea why, he never says no to anybody. <laughs> and, uh, so as much as, as much as he may like being there, uh, the, me, for some reason, I'm a bad guy, I had to kick everybody out of the locker room. Yeah. So, uh, I don't, uh, the, the last fight was no problem, there's a lot less people there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, when he, and he's the same guy when he was 1 and 0, as 19 and 0, and at 29 and 0, he'll be the same guy. 
So uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. You know, I wa the night after the last fight, I went to eat pizza. I know that shocks you guys. And uh, the guy goes, hey, Scardina. I go, uh, before I get answer, he's like, no, I saw you on TV, blah, 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 blah. All in like broken English, Italian. But in the end, the pizza was free. The most important part. <laughs> so I am slowly but surely become the Freddie Roach of Italy. And this is my, my dream goal. There you go. Free food in Italy. That's it. What more could you ask for? Ringside tickets. Yeah. That's it. You got it. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got for uh, music? Walking to the ring. I saw. You know, Dino is not a big fan of the rap music in the gym. Neither is Tom. Um, but you know, if it's Italian, I think you can get away with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> you know, I he like Italian rap. Right? Yeah. We let, have, it slide, uh, let it slide. We have, we have something. Something good for for the next. You party. got a couple guys you're kind of friends with, right? I yeah, saw yeah, yeah. It. yeah. All the rapper, uh, trapper, or whatever. And yeah, they are my friend. Every time I walk in the gym, it's rap music. Everyone's like, "Why aren't you saying it?" Oh, Danielle is the only one that's allowed to play it. That's <laughs> not Danielle. You forget it, but he gets a pass for who he is. We actually Gue Pequeno, one of his friends, who's a big rap star. Um, he actually trains here, so the least we can do is play the guy's music. If uh, Ice Cube wants to come train, I promise I'll play his song. No problem. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited for your fight. I mean, there's just so much ahead of you. You know what I mean? There's, there's yeah. just a lot of attention on your, on your weight class right now, which is awesome. You're on a roll. I think all of Miami should be behind you, just like Italy is. Um, so you got two bases there, fan bases that hopefully continue to rally around you, get behind your career, and some massive fights well, the, the fight ahead of you is a big fight, but there's a lot of fights on yeah. the horizon for you. So, you know, as a boxing fan, I'm excited to tune in. I'm going to be watching closely. I know you a yes man, apparently, with all these fans in the locker room. So maybe I'll get a flight over there. We'll see. But. That's it. You're in. Don't worry. <laughs> I got a bracelet for you. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to close it out or, or say hello to your fans. Yeah, really thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. And uh, thank you, everybody, for, to support me and... I'll see you soon. I'll see you uh, October 1st. Yeah, on the zone. Watch his zone. fight. Yeah, give him all the fight details. All the yeah. fight details. The where they can He's going to be on the zone. The uh, zone. October, October 1st. Friday yeah. night. Friday night. Friday against, night. against a German at guy. Nine, but Doberstein. Italian time. Europe time. So. Doberstein? Doberstein, yeah. Not yeah, because good. with Doberman Pincher. Uh, yeah, so it's on. it, it goes on at 9 o'clock. He's the main event, so he's a little later. But so that's six hours earlier here in Miami. Yeah. Which so, nice. so, to watch on so, a Friday so, afternoon. That's it, Friday afternoon. Friday night, which and I know everyone's home from work anyway. Everyone works from home. So put your turn your Zoom off and turn on the zone <laughs> and uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll. People from Miami can come at the gym. Yeah, yeah. for sure. You can come to the gym and watch them train. Train next to them. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Just buy you, free pizzas for everyone that gets in the ring with them. <laughs> that's right. Other than that, we will see you on the beach. Ciao for now. Welcome back to the world famous Fifth Street Gym Podcast number 17. And here we are with the founders and president and CEO, CFO, all those letters of and Toho Coffee. Mm -hmm. Tell us uh, everything. Tell us everything about it. I drink the coffee every day, so I don't have I don't need to know. We have it here cold, and I don't believe in energy drinks. Uh, I don't want the fighters drinking energy drinks. I think coffee is the only caffeine, real caffeine from real coffee beans the only way to go. But tell us actually about your coffee, why. I don't even know why I enjoy it so much. I just know it tastes good. What about your company is so good? I know that you bring it directly to me, so I'm spoiled. But uh, tell, tell us about the company. Yeah, we're at Antoho Coffee. That's my husband, Juan, and I'm Jackie. And uh, we roast coffee in, in small batches. Uh, we order it up from Cafe Imports up in Minneapolis, and we select coffee that we like, that we want to share with other people. So that's what we have. <laughs> so you have this iced coffee you bring us that I like need to get through my work day. Uh -huh. uh, I'm a very high in training classes and professional fighters all day long, and it's you know it's somewhere in the 90s in here right now, and I'm not just sitting here. Uh, why is it so refreshing and so sweet? It's not sour or like bitter like coffee is. What about it is makes it, what do you do to make it so? Well, it's a cold brew coffee. Yeah, so it's explain, yeah. it's a little bit of a technical thing with cold brew. So with this one, this one is a mixture of Brazil and a mixture of Costa Rica. And we do like 
just two thirds Brazil and one third of Costa Rica, and they have like a nutty sweet flavor. And it doesn't have a lot of citric flavor in it, so it brings down that that bitterness. Yeah, it's because the idea with the cold with the cold brew is the is the the, the acidity to go you know low, low. Right. the coffee and the caffeine just keep it there, and then also it's not that hard in your in your in your your stomach, so it's good. And then of course with the colder it is, the better. And then it takes 24 hours, I believe, before it's ready, yes, yes. or no? Yes. yes. So we just roast it and then you leave it 24 hours to remove the coffee and then cold and then run through here to, to the gym. So uh, his name is Juan, but I call him Cafecito because I'm so excited. He comes, he comes in the door in the morning and uh, I've already, I'm already my third lesson or fourth private lesson. He comes in with the cold coffee and I am ready to put it directly in my veins <laughs> to get to get going um, but uh, it's been it's been great to have it's delicious how do people get it how do they find it so we are in the social media we are in Instagram and also we have our web page what or, is your web page antohocoffee.com and what is your Instagram uh, Antoho Coffee. That's spelled. Yeah. Hold on spelled. spelled yes Antoho yeah. right Antoho A N T O with a little Thing on top of it, J O uh -huh. and Toho. And Toho. So don't and mess up. <laughs> uh, my wife's from Venezuela, so smack me if she would say that. <laughs> Nevertheless, so AntohoCoffee.com and Antoho Coffee is the, is the Instagram. Instagram. So yes. send them an Instagram message, direct message, and then you could order coffee and you could be as wired as I am. <laughs> there you go. And one more thing flavors? How many flavor, different flavors do you have? Oh, right now we have four different flavors. We have offerings from Guatemala, Brazil, Costa Rica, and Colombia. Yes. Awesome. You are from where? I love Colombia. Europe. You are from Colombia. So you are from where coffee comes from. That's right. So you know coffee. That's right. So that is the secret. It's like you're like a sommelier of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Uh, it takes a, uh, a lot of time, but I used to grow up in a, in a farm. My, my brother used to manage the, the farm of my, my uncle. So that was... I just grew up just between the, the, the coffee plants and everything, so that, that was a family business. Family business. Yeah. And now it remains. Uh, exactly. Your family extends and is very good. So everybody, get, get a hold of my Instagram, send me a direct message, mm -hmm. and uh, we will see you on the beach. Ciao for now. <laughs>